Welcome to Yahoo Sports. I'm Tim Hines, joined by Hall of Famer Julius Irving. Doc, thanks for being here. Uh, you're welcome. Nice to see you. So I got to ask, uh, we're getting closer to uh, basketball playoffs. Okay. The headline that we keep constantly seeing in the NBA yeah. right now is about resting players. Right. You come from the old school basketball. How do you view resting players? Well, it's always happened, but it's never been a public controversy the way that it is right now. And I think, uh, you know, it's to what degree. I remember, you know, my early years as a pro, uh, Previous season, we didn't rest players and went out early. And the next season, it was a specific conversation. Look, if you're going to be around, you're going to play 12 minutes, sit down, or would you rather just not play in the game? You know, coach would give a player a choice. And you knew if you played 12 minutes, it was going to affect your stats. And a lot of contracts were negotiated based on stats. So, you know, that wasn't really a, a good option. But... You know, to satisfy the fans, paying good money to see you play, you know, they, they want to see the stars on the court. So it wasn't talked about in the media, but it was talked about in the locker room. Now, the other one that's going around today, uh, you know, teams have constantly been doing it. Sam Henke now in conversations with the Kings. Uh, his resume includes fixing the Philadelphia 76ers via tanking. As a player and now a coach, how do you see tanking in the NBA? You know, once again, I, I mean, I don't think teams and individuals, especially upper management individuals, publicly talk about that being their strategy. You know, for me, never really experienced that, mm -hmm. you know, where Tim was intentionally trying to lose a game. You know, 16 years, you know, 16 runs at it, and six times getting to the finals, you know, which was great. You know, the, the management conversation, the players' conversation is different. No management is going to go to their players and say, I want you guys to lose this game tonight. <laughs> now, he might go and tell that to the coach. And the coach might strategically do things, you know, bench guys who should be on the court, you know, that create a disadvantage for their team. But I don't think that's ever a management to play a conversation. We talked about, you know, when you played the game and the game today, is there a difference in the way that you view the game? Is there something, either it's a benefit or a negative in the way the NBA's played today? Well, I think there's some games that I watch that, you know, kind of look like a video game. It looks like it's a little uh, less control from a fundamental standpoint and things that players do. I mean, they're gifted, they're gifted athletically, no question about it. And you have a lot of players who, who don't have great experience who thrive on their athletic experience. And I think that's kind of like a train wreck about to happen. You know, if the guy doesn't buckle down and say, look, I need to be more fundamentally sound in order to survive in this league, in order to have a, a long career, to be able to play, you know, at a later stage in my career when physically I can't do what I'm doing now. So, um, so there, there is a science to the game. I mean, it is rocket science, truly. But uh, in watching today's game, you know, sometimes I am frustrated, you know, when I see uh, errors committed because of a lack of fundamentals. And, you know, now the consequence of error is you know, way different than it used to be. So I guess there's a different standard, and that can be kind of frustrating from sitting on the sidelines helplessly saying, well, if I was there, I probably wouldn't have done that. If I was coaching that player, I probably wouldn't have allowed that. And, you know, when the play is complete, it's exciting and it's fun, but when it's incomplete, you know, it just seems like a stupid thing to do. Well, we're going to see a lot of some of those kind of passes, I think, in the new three-on-three -three league that's coming up. You were just signed on to be a coach of the league. How did you get involved? What made you want to be a part of this new league? I think uh, for me, uh, you know, I'm kind of like the last guy to sign up. I, I did consult with some of the other coaches mm -hmm. who signed up, specifically Allen Iverson and, and Clyde Drexler, who were friends. You know, this is more of a favor for Ice Cube. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the guy I've gotten to know in the, in the last few months. Uh, he seems to be very passionate about the, uh, the, the expectation of the league. I think some people are just curious about it. You know, some people are motivated by the money and, and others are, you know, taking a wait and see approach. So uh, even though I'm, I'm committed to it and I'm in, signed up, I, I'm still taking a wait and see approach. I'm kind of looking at this on a year, year to year basis. Now, you'll be the, I, I'm not even sure, I lost count of how many leagues now you'll be the cornerstone of, but I think this is going to be the third? Uh, at least three. At least three. That we know <laughs> at least three, right. There's leagues you've never heard of. <laughs>
Dr. J, appreciate right. your time. All right. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Absolutely. For more on Dr. J, the NBA, or the three-on-three league, make sure you check out Yahoo Sports. I'm Tim Hines.